This is what I hope will be a quick video to show you what I'm doing in class with a spreadsheet so you can look at it again later when you have a spreadsheet in front of you. I've um, got this table of data which we saw in class and we're going to make a cumulative frequency graph and then a relative cumulative frequency graph. And you want to start out by getting your data in the spreadsheet. So I will type pretty much what it says here. But for the speeds, I need all the interval boundaries. So the boundaries are 25 and 30 and 35 and 40 up to 55. I need those on separate lines. Luckily, the spreadsheet is great at this. So if I select the first two, I'm going to move my cursor to this um, bottom corner and drag down and go until it says 55, it will fill those in for me. For the frequencies, those are going to be um, like 30 will be the end of the interval with 30. So 25 is the end of the interval 25, at which point there's none that are less than 25. Think about this as being like the end of the interval that started below. And then I'm just typing those numbers in. Um, sometimes to check and make sure I haven't screwed up, I'll do a sum at the bottom, but not here, because the cumulative frequency is going to take care of that. And that's really wide, and the thing that I can do is choose this um, wrap text thing and it just makes them fit um, in a reasonable horizontal space. So to accumulate is to add up. And so I click here and then equals because I want the spreadsheet to do the adding. I wanted to add that one, which obviously isn't very much. But then next time I want to add the one above plus the one to the left. So I'll click on the one above and then type a plus and then the one to the left. And this is going to magically fill down too because for instance here when you look at what that is you can see it is the one above plus the one to the left. So those are relative cell references. And you can see the total comes up 50, which is what I knew in the problem in my notes was supposed to be. I also want a relative cumulative frequency column. And that one also can wrap. And uh, the goal here is to turn those into percentages. And they'll be percentages of 50. So first equals this divided by 50. And that'll give me a decimal. Well, you can't tell it's decimal now, but it, you'll see. Um, but not a percentage. I'm going to change that in a minute. If I drag down, you'll see that this stop. This doesn't quite work like one would hope. Um, because this first one said divide by 50. But this next one said divide by that blank cell. And that's not what I wanted. So it's easy to fix that, it turns out. Um, if you click in this one that you want to change, J9, I want it to stay J9 all the time and not change. If you do F4 on your computer or just type dollar signs in front of the J and the 9, that tells it to use the absolute column J, don't change it, and the absolute row 9, don't change that. And then when I drag down, it works because here you can see the J9 remains the same every time because of those dollar signs. I do want these to look like percentages, although decimals are fine too. And that's easy to fix because in Excel there's generally a percent button right here which will, hey, make up percentages. And I'd like them better centered, so I'll center them, she says. There we go. Um, I can make things fancier if I want, like this and like that, but it really doesn't, I don't even like that. It really doesn't matter. Um, so at this point I want to make a cumulative frequency graph, which is you know sort of a curve that goes up like this. There's not a command that straight up says that, but it's easy to do anyway. So I'll select the speed column and the cumulative frequency column, and I held down, I'm on a Mac, so I held down the command key on uh, PC, you'd hold down the control key while you drag the second thing. And then insert, because I want to insert a graph. And of these choices for graphs, and depending on the size of your window, you might see words next to them too. I want the one that's like a scatter plot. And I want the one that's connected scatter plot. Now, it's not really a scatter plot that I'm doing, but I want to connect a bunch of dots in order, and that will do it. The smooth lines and markers is going to make it look like a nice cumulative frequency curve. That would use straight lines. That would not be what I want. So um, I can also take the markers off, actually. Maybe I should leave the markers off. That'll look better. Oh, there it is. Look how pretty. And that's a basic one right away. Um, and so if that's all you need, you can stop here. Um, probably I want to change the title. It's talking about speeds. Um, so maybe I'd say uh, speeds in kilometers per hour or something like that. Speed, speeds, I don't know. Um, 
I want axis labels for sure, and I kind of want to start this not at um, zero because there's this huge gap. Notice that my curve does start on the x-axis though, and it should. You can see when I hover that, it says it's at the point 25 comma zero. I definitely want zero on my y-axis. So if I click on the axis and then go, I think it's, it's one of these two. Is this one? Nope, it's this one. I get axis options. And I can change some things about the axis. Like, for instance, what do I want to start at? And I'm thinking 20 is probably good. Um, yeah, that's better. 20 to 60 is fine. Or maybe I go 25 to 55, but I sort of like this one. Um, major and minor axes, if I like the way it looks, I'm just going to leave that alone. I definitely would like to have um, words next to the axes to tell me what's going on there. And that's add chart element, axis titles, primary horizontal. And I'll just make something I can type on here. And these are speed in kilometers per hour and also want to do that on the vertical axis so axis titles primary vertical and I'm just double clicking to select this like any other text even though it goes up um, cumulative fre frequency and that's a pretty nice picture um, you can do some more with the axes if you want and see if I can remember how to do this correctly if I click that and go back to the axis options here. Um, the major and minor, I can turn on grids more, but where is that? Yeah, um, I think that's here. I can get, see, I can get those numbers there, those, those tick marks, and I can do that on the y-axis as well if I want by clicking on the y-axis and saying I want to see those tick marks, for instance. So if you'd like to add some more things like that, you can. It's possible to add more grids, if I can remember where that is, which I seldom do. Um, so all kinds of stuff are possible to change the display. Right now you can see the, the units aren't sort of squared, but it doesn't really matter. You can you know, adjust that as much as you like, but it's by dragging. I don't know of a nice way to tell the computer to, hey, make this square all the time. But that should get you to something you can use. There's a relative cumulative frequency graph. The, the idea is really the same, you just choose the two different columns. So if I choose these two columns and do basically the same process as before, which is to insert one of those, then you can see that the vertical axis is in percentage. You can do all the same things as before to make that look better, but there really is no fundamental difference in what you do there, so I'm not going to say any more about that.